Hey folks, it's Darren Lapome, Associate Dean for Students in Engineering at the Jacobs School of Engineering at UC San Diego. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about things that I've observed in my own research lab and as a student, uh, however many years ago, and uh, also um, in my conversations with particularly graduate students who are experiencing problems or uh, rough patches with their PIs and how you might uh, negotiate those. So a few years ago, I recorded a talk uh, on uh, how to win friends and influence people, which is named after the 1936 book by the same title uh, by Dale Carnegie, no relation to the steel magnate. Andrew Carnegie, and this book uh, ended up being one of the best books I've ever uh, read on social psychology and interpersonal relationships. And I'm going to tell you a little bit um, about uh, that uh, just to kind of summarize what I think is useful in student PI relationships. Uh, from that uh, from that line of social psychology and one takeaway is that as engineers and scientists and people who care about analytical solutions to things we tend to think that everything is about facts when uh, we have a problem in our coursework we can always go to the textbook or to uh, to Mathematica or MATLAB or chat GPT or uh, our calculator and find a fact and that's right and if we get everything right we'll have an A and then if we keep getting A's throughout life in a factual uh, analytical based problem solving uh, based uh, exercises we will do all right uh, however that is rarely the case in uh, after you're done with your coursework and you need to work in an academic research lab or uh, or working on a project with multiple people in either academia or or industry so reality is a bit uh, is a bit muddy I would even say that interpersonal relationships once you get all of that uh, once you get all of that technical stuff um, under your belt that interpersonal relationships end up being responsible for two-thirds of your uh, success after coursework uh, is done. However, there is hope. You can still use that analytical mindset to do better in every interpersonal relationship. Uh, you can know, for example, that there are righter and wronger ways to approach a situation. So you can either, if you take the extremes of walking by somebody you know on the street and you either, uh, you either smile at them and say even how are you doing versus uh, which is better than walking by and saying nothing, which is certainly better than walking by and swearing at them or giving them the middle finger. <laughs> so once we admit that there are righter and wronger ways to approach these situations, we tend to realize that, okay, every situation can end up being positive sum and we can get a lot out of these relationships if we just know how to uh, how to approach them. So everybody is different. Every relationship is different. The expectations in every relationship are different. The boundaries in every relationship uh, are different. For example, between you and your romantic partner and you and uh, a professional colleague, obviously those boundary conditions are different. But there are some things that always are true. For example, appreciation expressing appreciation for what somebody has uh, has done what i have learned is that what somebody has done is often invisible for example now that i've been associate dean for students for a while i know that as an undergraduate every time i went to an event and there were free sodas <laughs> or donuts well number one they were not free and number two somebody had to buy them somebody had to find a truck if it was a big event someone had to do the logistics somebody had to take time off of work uh, to go do that somebody had to find a parking permit so that they could back up that truck full of drinks to 
to the event. There is a lot that goes into just that stuff, and uh, and that is everywhere you look around you. That there is uh, that there is always some appreciation to be had for something that you end up seeing the uh, the back uh, the back end of as well. And of course, that goes the other way around. That PIs need to be expressing appreciation for uh, for the things that you do. Now, what's the difference between appreciation and flattery? So this comes up a lot like appreciation. Oh, I'm nice. I say good job. I say I say that was a really good thing you did there. Um, that was a really good thing uh, you did there. And and I love you for it. And you're awesome. But uh, that comes off as uh, being flattering as opposed to expressing expressing appreciation appreciation is specific i appreciate that you did this because i know the amount of time that it took that's factual that's genuine appreciation i appreciate that you could have been doing other things with your time i appreciate the way you did this helped this other person so that they were empowered to do it again in the future I appreciate the way that you did this because it set a good example. I appreciate what you did because it showed really good scholarship, examples of, uh, of scholarship that the community can follow. Flattery, however, is, uh, is very surface level. Flattery is telling somebody how they feel about themselves on their best day, <laughs> a day when everything is going right, and they sit and they think to themselves, "Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm I'm awesome. That's great." Um, and whether or not that has uh, happens to you routinely, uh, it probably happens a few times a year uh, at least when you feel like that, and somebody telling you you're awesome. Okay, uh, okay, could could do better. Could do better than that. Uh, number two uh, of, of guaranteed ways to create value in an interpersonal relationship is listening to understand as opposed to listening to respond. And sometimes this is uh, attributed to uh, uh, the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey, I believe. Um, and what people tend to do is listen with the point of getting their point across or listening to uh, to find a counterpoint to the example or listening because, because they heard a really good argument on a podcast or a YouTube video like this one and they're really excited to get it out there um, rather than listening to understand, which is listening to the other person's perspective and where they are coming from. Finally, the number three uh, rule of social psychology in these sort of interpersonal uh, uh, interactions in a technical, academic, or professional environment is that the only way to get somebody to do what you want them to do is to make them want to do it. So the only way to get somebody, the only other way you have is like a threat, like I'm going to do this if you don't do this, or issuing an ultimatum. Those are not really good ways of nurturing that relationship in the long term. So how do you say, uh, how do you get somebody to do what you want them to do? You make them want to do it. How do you make them want to do it? You use facts and you explain to them um, in a nice way, uh, in a thoughtful way, in a way that takes into account things that they've said and that they understand, uh, or in that you understand what they what they hope to achieve, how what you want fits into uh, to their uh, their goals or their goals for a particular project. Finally, how does this relate to relationships with your PIs? So PIs are not selected for their interpersonal skills or their management skills or even their teaching skills. So at an R1 university like UC San Diego and like 100 other R1 universities in the, in the U.S., we don't even, we aren't even, we don't even give like a teaching talk like we we're hired basically uh because the charter of the university is to advance research and to bring in research dollars um even though uh there are some arguments to say that research actually costs the university more money than it generates in overhead and indirect costs but that's a conversation for uh for another time um 
that our goal is to create knowledge using research and we are not trained as counselors as pis we're not communication gurus we're not uh we're not monks that have figured out how to uh, how to listen really well and uh, and come up with exactly the the best uh way to respond to any particular um uh any particular uh, uh, scenario um, and something that you want also want to keep in mind as a student in a PI's lab is that the PI got their job after being a postdoc at the age of you know 28 29 30 31 32 usually by you know mid early mid 30s the median PI and they're insecure too they also um, suffer occasionally from the imposter syndrome, uh, which is, or the, the imposter syndrome has a new word now, I'm forgetting what it is, but the uh, imposter phenomenon, uh, where they may feel, um, they may feel insecure compared to their colleagues who are winning this and that grant, and they're talking about how great they are on Twitter and whatever. And they may need you to meet them halfway. <laughs> and what does that mean? Well, it means having the kind of conversation where you have explicit ex uh, conversations about expectations. So what do you want out of the PhD? What are you hoping to achieve? Do you want to uh, uh, create knowledge, create a clinically relevant intervention, create an intervention that can be used in energy sciences and technology. You want to have that talk and know that that talk, that having that talk is absolutely on the table and legitimate and something that absolutely can be had as in you want to do that as early as possible. If you're a third year or fourth year and you haven't had that conversation, um, make an effort to make that conversation now. Another point is that your PI may want, or they do actually want you to succeed, but they may not know how you work best. So in 2019, starting in 2019 through, I'm going to say partly through last year, I did not do the best job um, in mentoring a few of the students in my research lab. Um, I think that they... Uh, that because I had a, a kid in 2019 and then COVID happened right after I had a kid and then I became an administrator. So first as faculty director of the Idea Engineering Student Center and now as associate dean for students, my calendar filled up. I have like five people who can uh, add stuff to my calendar without my explicit approval, uh, which is, you know, these are meetings that I do need to take, but um, but I'm, I'm busy, right? Nine to five, it's hard. It's I admit it's hard to get time um, with with me for my students, and I'm I regret that, and I, I try to do what I can to mitigate those uh, the costs associated with that. But some of the relationships with my uh, with my group members, some of whom have uh, graduated now, I kind of fell through the cracks, to be honest. And I was taking sort of a one size fits all approach, where uh, as it happened, some students were ac actually wanted more. Uh, more hands-on, not micromanaging, but more contact, more feedback, more direction than I was tending to give them. And so we adjusted our, uh, our meeting frequency and the way in which we interact. And I think we're, we're uh, in this case of the students who graduated, um, we uh, achieved a better balance. And uh, this is something that kind of constantly requires uh, requires vigilance. And the final point I want to make is that there is more flexibility in project selection, uh, methodology, and even goals than you think there is. So uh, some of this comes down to funding sources, though not all. So different grants have different levels of expectations in terms of benchmarks and deliverables and whether or not your specific aims are met in exactly the way you say they are going to be. Most grants, however, know, like the program managers, know that there are difficulties that arise and that you there needs to be some ability to pivot. It's also the case where 
a, your PI might have been on a latte trip early in the morning and sent off a bunch of emails uh, to students or an email to a student with a bunch of ideas in it. And the student took those ideas to mean that you have to try these, otherwise you're fired. <laughs> and that is rarely, if ever, the case. Um, when I get an email like that, I'm horrified to learn that somebody has been spinning their wheels based on some kind of pipe dream that I... Uh, that I came up with early in the morning or late at night and uh, and I was just trying to spitball ideas with them and they took it to mean that they and they took it to mean that I absolutely needed them to do that otherwise there would be consequences then we take a step back and I realize how heavy my words are but the student needs to realize as well how um, it's important to communicate these uh it's important to communicate the you know when things are are not working or seem unreasonable that we have a lot more flexibility in deciding the approach we take to a problem and even the problem outcome and even in fact the funding source that uh, that a student is on um than uh, than the student may think so it's not being a failure if you request a uh, you know a meeting to talk about alternative strategies and uh, and even alternative goals so that's where uh where i'm going to uh, end these tidbits for right now and um yeah there's something i meant to say earlier which is in science and academia and technology as somebody who still you know even though i've said the things that i've said right now i'm tempted to believe that there are analytical and fact-based approaches and solutions to all these problems uh, as somebody who has one foot in the energy field and you know even if you were to come up with the best technology for solar energy conversion ever you know it was uh, one cent per square meter it produced, you know, one cent per peak watt uh, it lasted for a hundred years. It didn't cause any environmental degradation to create it. It was the best technology in the world, you know, according, according to you, according to me. If you don't convince the people who make the decisions and the investment and the infrastructure that this idea is the best, which is two-thirds of the job, then it's not going to go anywhere. This is the same thing in business as well. So I hope I've said a few useful things um, in here. Please let me know what you think in the comments. I uh, try my best to respond to every, uh, every thoughtful uh, comment. So talk to you soon. Bye.